Hey. Hey. What's how are on? you? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good, good. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Landon Haynes. I'm an author with Atheist Republic. Um, um, what's your book? Yeah, my book is uh, A Justified Faith. Justified. Right there, you can see it. Cool. Yeah, we had thought about changing the cover, but we decided not to. So uh, okay. I think you kind of had some people leave that were kind of working on it. And uh, it just didn't pan out. So, Do you want to change the cover? Um, I had the idea, but I don't know. Okay, let me know what the idea is. We'll change the cover. But what's sure. it like today? We want to talk about uh, morality. I had I just recently had a discussion with uh, David Wood. Uh, do you have you have a chapter on morality in your book? Don't you? I do. Yeah. So what is that? Um, because one thing I keep noticing is that a lot of when I talk to theists, I, I have a chapter on morality in my book as well. But this right. is seems this seems to be the main thing that you know when that they put in everything on, right? It's mm -hmm. like whether or not there is a proof for existence or God or not, um, that's all w one thing. But the right. idea that is with, the idea is that we, ha we all have to want there to be a God, because without God, like morality and basically good, bad, evil, justice, ethics all of it goes out the window there's nothing that you could um, rely on right and there's right. examples in history that they give like look like you know they bring on examples of um hitler stalin and like you know why is that wrong like if without god and stuff like, and you always like um every time you bring an explanation uh, to why you think well this is because we have these moral laws you you know you because it just works. These are we come up with these rules, we come up with these standards, because it has made our lives better. Then the discussion goes into well, why would we want? It's just why would we want to make our lives better? That just seems to be a subjective thing, um, you know. Without without having a source of authority, without having something within the fabric of the universe which makes something good and something's bad. This is just your personal preference. As it's just like what well, is your personal preference to to make uh, to maximize well-being among other people. It might not be someone else's um, preference to maximize well-being, and who gets to say you are right and they're wrong, right? right. What 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 in your book? What do you you know, you you have an entire chapter on morality, right? I do. Is it, I do. So what is what do you cover in that? Okay, well, one of the things I cover is all these statistics that show that um, all the most secular countries in the world are the best off by every measure. You know, all the statistics bear it out. I think uh, Phil Zuckerman is the, the leading um, researcher into that. And, uh, I mean, there's just a long list of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, across the board, you know, in every field, you know, happiness even, everything. Um, and you notice that the worst countries are, are all the most religious Um so I get into that. Um, so so also, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play the devil's advocate here. I have a lot of sure. responses to a lot of this stuff, but I'm gonna try to see if um, what could I do to play the 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 steel man, the Christian argument, right, or at least sure. the theist argument. The countries. What are the, some of the examples of these countries that you're mentioning? Like, oh sure, um, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. Right. England is about fifty percent uh, secular. So, so uh, they would say countries were the foundation of Judeo-Christian uh, history and values. So they mm -hmm. say like they're, they're, even if the people there are less religious, the found the reason why they're moral the reason the, is that there's a there's a foundation there that was built that ev you know even atheists when they're being moral when they they have you know they have superior standards is because they are borrowing from Judeo-Christian values. Mm -hmm. So we touched on this a lot in our last two um, podcasts, a whole lot. <laughs> um, right. So, okay. So that's similar. Yeah, that's a little bit repetitive. Yeah. But um, I mean, I can repeat the, you know. Okay, just repeat that, that a little bit, and then we go to something else. Just sure. So Christianity reigned for a thousand years, and it was hell on earth. Basically, there was no concept of rights. You know, there was constant um, religious war and persecution, and uh, you know. It didn't change until secular arguments um, right. and uh, were made, and the government was separated from religion. 
Um, but so. then they say, well, no, actually, Stalin, um, people, Stalin and Mao and people like that have committed sure. way more crimes. And yeah, more- well, Im- imagine if uh, the, the Inquisition had modern weaponry. Right. Just, just imagine. And they, they were going for a lot longer than Stalin and Mao. They were going for thousands of years many hundreds of years right so imagine if they had modern weaponry and they had you know nukes and tanks and things of that nature that they could employ right, but but, um, but who gets to say who gets to say uh that they like people like stalin and mao what they did was wrong based on what well it's based on our common humanity it's based on um our empathy we're empathetic social creatures that have to live together um and we are interconnected and interdependent deeply. Um, so well, that not, is not all of us. Some, in any dogma. So it's based on. So, okay, again, they would say David would in the discussion I had with him, he would say. So it's based on your feelings. It's not really something that is fact out there. There's not something a truth that you could point out to and say this is. It's a fact that this is right and this is wrong. Again, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. You just, you just, you, you're just appealing to emotions. Uh, rather than actual, you know, but that's but that's the kind of um, animals we are. Mm-hmm. We're emotional, empathetic creatures. That's our nature. That's foundational. That's undeniable. So, so, um, I don't think authority is morality. I don't think it, saying that some authority figure says something makes that morality, right? Mm-hmm. I think that if you just if you look at it that way, you're just being a minion, right? You're not being moral. You're a minion, basically, for whatever authority you want to put up. I mean, because as a parent automatically moral just because they they created a a child no right i mean i think i think it comes from the bottom up i think it's based in common humanity i think um we have our empathy and the the lessons of history to guide us and i think that if you employ reason and you you take those things into account they move us in certain directions and those are the directions we've gone right so So, but but they say what's Okay, but this is what you want, right? But if tomorrow somebody, another Mao, another Stalin, another Hitler comes, and they want something else, and they don't care about, uh, they don't, they're not sympathetic, and they don't care about maximizing well-being, uh, there is, you don't have anything to show them why they're wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, other than the fact you, you that do, you do, though, what? you do, though, you have the lessons of history. You see, these countries are disasters. And the people are not happy. And even tyrants. Well, you think tyrants, it, I, you think it, tyrants live, live, live a happy life? I mean, tyrants have to constantly watch their back, right? And and they they constantly have people gunning for them. And, and people, you know, have so, nothing but uh, disdain for them. That's not a I great mean, life. So, well, I mean, so do, so do people like Martin Luther King. Even the people that once... Um, Gandhi didn't was also, also had to watch his back. Like I mean, I, I mean that I don't know, but I'm just saying that you you're saying that we should want to people you, because of, of our sense of sympathy and because we want other people to be happy. This is why we want this. Like we we come up with moral <clears throat> laws and codes and stuff like that. But it, it reduces to, it reduces to our nature. Which right, is but, undeniable. Then, but then for but if then if that's what you're standing on, then if some if one day a person comes and says, that, but that's not what I want, and I'm going to rule mm-hmm. this nation, and I don't care that if people are you know I just want order, I want people like I want to start a tyranny, and I don't really care if people are miserable. You mm-hmm. don't really have a logical argument to tell him why he's, why he he is wrong. You just, you just, you do. The, only, the only thing you could tell this person is that I don't want that. Well, he's like, well, I do. Well, why would I stop? Right? They, you, they, the Christian will come and say, I have an answer here, and you as an atheist don't. What was the answer? Okay. Well, because of the lessons of history, because um, we What's see it? that this type of society has more flourishing, more. You know, happiness. Yeah, but why? The, the, but the person that you're talking to doesn't care about people. Well, if, they, if no, if somebody doesn't it doesn't care about flourishing and happiness, then I mean, what? You can't. It's like an insane person. You can't even talk to them. Like, what's the point? You know what I mean? You have to start somewhere. You start in our our nature, right? Yeah, but you. Um, so what they're saying is that therefore they need to share a feeling with you, and therefore it's just based on feelings. If they don't well, have that feeling, if they don't have the desire for happiness and flourishing mm-hmm. of societies. Then there is no rational argument that you could use against them. You only say like you have to have my feeling for this to start. Well, if they don't have that feeling for this to start, 
then you there's no you can't have a conversation with them anymore. There's nothing to well, start. I pointed to the fact that we're in, interdependent and interconnected social animals, right? Mm-hmm. Try to do something. Try to live by yourself and not depend on anybody for anything. Every single aspect of your life is part of a network of of interconnection with other people, even dead people and their their accomplishments. So and and. Well, you said there's no logical argument. I'm giving you a logical argument. Okay, so no, you're saying there's interconnection. By the way, I have, right. I'm not. I don't agree with what I'm saying. I know saying. you're playing I'm, devil's advocate. Right. I got you. Yeah. So, okay, so interconnection. I, if I'm a tyrant, yeah. I make all the connections. I get to put. People... How, how long do tyrants typically last? Do you desire? Do you like your own well-being? Do you have a desire for your own well-being? How long do tyrant... you have to live with other people? If you're a tyrant, right. you're probably going to be miserable, right? I don't know. Was Stalin miserable? Probably. Stalin died. Um, I mean, you go back to the age? Roman emperors. You think Caligula? You think he lived a happy life? I mean, he might have had. Stalin a little died, died at seventy-four. So Stalin died at seventy-four, and he died knowing that he won the war. Yeah, longevity is not is not equivalent with. But with do you happiness. think he was sad? He 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 won the war against Hitler, and he yeah. he he felt like he was victorious. Nothing bad really happened to Stalin. What about Mao? Mao. Yeah. I think. I, I'm I'm thinking he probably didn't have a great. I think he probably had a subpar just, personal just, life because to have the connection that. with people, you have to be trusting. You have to have a, you have to have some kind of trust with other people. You are a social animal, and you can only have a genuine connection with other animals by wow. being trustworthy. We only have human other humans that we can depend on, and we can only uh, have trust. Okay, we but you earn okay. that trust, right? So, so, so Mao, di- Mao died at eighty-two, and he yeah, but you probably, keep citing their age. Okay, no, I mean, okay, no, yeah, but the other thing, but Mao died starting a like a revolution, and watching his revolution become successful, right. feeling like he's a god, and dying at old age in a very comfortable life. I don't know how you could guess that he was unhappy. Maybe he, maybe he died a very happy man. I don't know if we could say that. I don't know if we could I, just I, guess that. Yeah, I don't know the personal details of Mao, but I, right. I imagine he didn't. I imagine he didn't compared to what he could have. So if I could, I've, I mean, it's possible to be ignorant and to not know what you're missing, right? To have genuine connections with people and to have a populace, if you're a ruler, that really yeah. wants you in power, right? A genuine connection with his wife. I don't think. I don't think we could. Like, are we really hanging all of morality on the fact that these people were sad? And what if we could show that they no, were no, no, sad? No, 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 no. But you're you're saying there's no logical argument. I'm saying we're social animals by our nature, right? We have that, and we have history to go on to teach us to, to guide us in the directions that that we should go. And it's not It's not. Um. It's not. There's no absolute morality, right? But there is an objective morality because uh, it's not just personal women preference. It's based on data. It's based on um, what has shown to work to produce yeah, but- flourishing societies, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, not, say, that's, they, not, that's not subjective, like a personal whim. That, that's objective data. So. Well, the subjective part is not, on, is not the part that we, the part where what makes society flourish, that's not subjective, right? Right. The part that is subjective is why should I want societies to flourish? Uh, by your nature, I mean, what? Okay, so let's say somebody, um, they're they're in love with destruction. They just want to see the world destroyed, right? Mm. Think they're going to be happy? Um, what are they going to do? There's all kinds of possibilities that are curtailed for them. They'll never see, right? <laughs> what are they going to do? Stare at the ground? Right. So I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting part. because I was having this argument with David Wood, and David Wood is a self-admitted psychopath. Right, so see the guy that had a, a debate with Eric Murphy the other day. I don't know um, from a talk even he because that guy was a psychopath that he was a diagnosed psychopath. Yeah, and it's not his fault he's a psychopath. Right? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he says like, listen, I have. He says is I've. He told me like, listen, I've rarely felt sympathy towards anybody ever. Uh-huh. Right, and he's a psychopath. Right, but do, do like, you pointing out exceptions to the rule not prove the rule. No, but it's not. These a are rule. exceptions. Yeah, right. but yeah, but what would you tell the psychopath? Why we should what? Well, what I think should... if you feel anything, you can at least point out logically. You know what the logical reasons, like what I've gone through. Like, do you desire your own happiness? Like, who doesn't? That's part of our biological makeup and our nature, right? Uh, is to 
Well, it's not part it's, of his biology. It's it's not part of his biological makeup to desire his own well being. Oh. Well, I mean, if you okay. go around killing people, you're going to be so, in jail. Um, if you don't have any so relation, so so if you can, okay, so he will go in jail. So, he, but if you can kill people and get away with it, mm-hmm. if you're like a tyrant and you don't care about people, then there's I can't tell you I can't. I can't have a logical discussion with you. and t- I can't give you a logical reason for why you shouldn't be torturing and murdering people and c- committing genocide. If okay. you are, if, right? Like, and that's most of, actually, what's the person, is, is that the, ex- uh, the exception to the rule? Like, how, what percentage of the population is psychopath? Very small. Very mm-hmm. small. And I'm not saying we ignore them, but I'm saying that they do prove the rule. They are exceptions to the rule, right? But um, isn't it isn't it that isn't it true the truth that it, the psychopaths are usually the okay so this is one person but isn't it they that usually get the power like isn't it the studies show that a lot of the CEOs are psychopaths and uh, some, some so and also like if they're one they're one percent of the population but they have a higher uh, they, they you know when it comes to power and becoming leaders and CEOs and stuff they are they're overrepresented compared to the you know the the percentage of you know the population so yeah. the fact that they get to rule uh, more than one percent maybe we we should be able to come up with an argument for the psychopaths for why not to to crush us little people mm-hmm. when once they do get in power right yeah because you need the people right you need to be you have stability right typically tyrants they crash and burn right but I just what the example most yeah there are exceptions there's always exceptions typically is is I, there I a study that shows that typically tyrants crash and burn? I've seen some data I don't have it uh, on me, mm. but I have seen some studies if, about that. If, they, if we look at data and we show that tyrants actually don't typically cra- uh, crash and burn and they actually get to live long happy lives, then then is that an argument for tyranny? I don't think so. I mean because you can always point out what they're missing. I mean, what are they missing? The social connections. But they're psychopaths. Being, being, being <laughs> well, they don't have any capacity for a human connection. I mean, at all? Not apparently not. David Wood. I, I think this is. David I think Wood, this is a David Wood, David Wood was. Uh, he he went through the phase where he uh, smashed his father's head in with a hammer. Yeah. And now he's saying like. <laughs> And now he's saying that he's living a moral life, not because of sympathy, but because of Jesus. That's what he's saying. Do you want to take Jesus away from somebody that without Jesus, he would be smashing his own father's skull in with a hammer? No. So you think Jesus, he should remain? But I think there may be something else that could do the trick. What? It's more reasonable. What? I mean, I I don't know. I'm just saying maybe there is. It doesn't necessarily have to be Jesus, right? Right. It could be something else. We could find it, maybe. Mm. How am so. I doing for dev- as devil's advocate? You're yeah. doing fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't think you really you, you pose some good questions, right. um, but I don't I don't really think you've won. Do you think you've won playing those? <laughs> well, I'm I don't a know. Christian. Christians always think they won. So True. I'm like, Enough. Enough. <laughs> so I've as a Christian, I already won before we even started this because I have Jesus and you don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Well, I think you can reduce morality down to a sentence, which is, um, mm-hmm. I feel bad when I treat others badly, and they may treat me badly if I treat them badly. So, and we discover that through thought and experience and experiment. Right. Um. So religion just says, religion denies experience and observation and experiment to maintain a predetermined belief. So religion can never really get a truth, except by accident, because it functions like that. But the scientific method broadly construed is what we need to find um, what we want, what our nature, what our, our nature really is, because we have to have accurate facts to build off of, right? If we have incorrect facts, we can't build a steady fo- uh, foundation. See, the, that what this okay so yeah well religion, religion just basically it can never that's why religion has never found anything out right it's never proved any of its claims even though it's been in control for you know thousands of years it's never advanced it's never uncovered any knowledge it's never proved any of its claims it's mm-hmm. never done anything but go in circles <clears throat> but the method of science broadly construed you know experiment testing all of that has because it works right 
Right. So, 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 so let me let me tell you what happened in the discussion. He said, like, listen, I, what I was telling to him, like, listen, we want to take care of each other. We want uh, to see other people happy. And we get sad when we see other people in misery, right? right? And he said, well, you as atheists, what you're doing is what you accuse theists of. You're saying this is right because of feelings. And you when when and you accuse Christians of believing in God because they want to believe in God. So you're now saying here's morality, here's moral laws because of feelings, because we want there to be. So you're basically being hypocrites when you use your feelings to prove ethics and morality. So how would you respond to that? I apologize so much. I was I was looking up a quote here. <laughs> can you no. can you repeat the last part of that? My bad. No, no. So so he said like, listen, atheists. Right. Say Christians do not uh, use their feelings to prove God. Like they they appeal to emotion. Like oh, I build have a, a emotional connection to Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is real. They said like oh, look at these theists. They say God is real because of feelings. But now they themselves are doing the same thing when it comes to morality. They're saying like oh, we just want we we have this feeling to see other. We want to see other people happy. We don't want to see other people misery. Therefore, moral loss, right? So you're mm -hmm. saying they you're saying. You're saying something is fact because of your feelings, so you atheists are being hypocrites uh, because feelings doesn't make anything f true. So, yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, look. First of all, we know people are real. We're pretty sure people are real, right? Okay. We interact with them every day, and God and Jesus are, are quite different from that. That's number one. And number two, I'm not talking about my, you know, I don't know, my whim or my. Uh, personal taste or, or hobby i'm talking about universal humanity i mean across cultures there are universals to humanity because i mean we have a common evolution um we are one species and we have it's just undeniable we have commonalities you know we yeah. all want we all it's, it's part of our nature now you can say it's our nature that's arbitrary well okay but it's our nature, and we're talking about us. Yeah, I, so right? how is that different from when atheists say, like, they, uh, theists using their feelings to prove God? How is that different? Because we don't know any gods exist, and there are many different gods, and there's they conflict with each other. I so mean, how, how can that's you, how a can contradiction. You say, how can you say religion is objective when there are so many different tribal you know, religions that contradict each other? There's no objectivity there. And even if there was a god, I don't. again, I don't see how authority is a foundation for morality. I don't I don't see how obedience to authority is morality. I think morality has to come from the bottom up and be agreed upon and discovered through our common humanity. And that and is far, far stronger than, than, than being a minion for an authority. But right? that's just your feelings. Uh, who says that's right? Who says why, why is it's that It's not right? just feelings, though. I mean, well, okay, it's partly feelings because right. those feelings are part of our nature, right? Okay. And we know every day we have to consider other people. We, we're interdependent, right? Yeah, so, but it's, and it's, not a personal, right. it's not a personal religion, it's a universal humanity, but it's and there's part... a difference. Okay, but, but okay, in another, in another and there, there's, there's also logical arguments, you know, uh, which I've tried to make, um, you know, about how, you know, if, if your uh, love over hate is more, uh, it's, it's healthier, um, gosh, there's other, other points I can make there in statistics, but you know, there's just a lot of things that support being a good person. I mean, you can get away with being a bad person, maybe, and you mm -hmm. can find some gratification in it, right? But there's a lot of downsides. So and someone, someone like David would, would say, actually, you know, you're saying, oh, this is part of our nature. This is part of our, um, this is how we are. But then if you look at people, how they are, actually, they're not as good as you say they are. These are uh, this is the same species that uh, feeds, uh, you know, other humans to lions as a form of entertainment. This is a for, this is the same human being that commits genocide all the time. This is the same species that you know that uh, uh, invades villages and cities, and everybody is raped, and the children are sold for you know. Uh, I mean, the amount yeah. of examples that you come up with, and even you look at now, like even its recent hist history, we had the. The Holocaust, and you know now what we're doing to our planet, it doesn't seem like you say, "Oh, this is our nature." It doesn't seem to be that big, that big of you know a significant part of our nature. At least, okay. 
We're, we're, I think we're getting into Steven Pinker territory here. Yeah. <laughs> that's what um, I, that's actually, as soon as he said that, this is what I pulled out. This is funny. That's that you think about Steven Pinker. Cause as soon as I said that, I like, I told all the, everybody to go read this book, but go on. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Just yesterday on Facebook, I saw this guy post this thing kind of bashing Steven Pinker. And I had to comment on it. Like Steven Pinker says progress. It's like, we have to trust in, the uh, irreversible, magical modernity. This and, and uh, like Pinker's said over and over again, you know, progress is not guaranteed in the future. That's why it's so important right. to uh, recognize the progress and, and and understand how it came about, so we can use that because nothing is guaranteed, right? At all. Right. So, but what's your answer then when when people tell you that actually humans are not as good as you're saying? Uh, well, humans have been pretty shitty, and, and you know, yep. there's no doubt about that. I mean, we're animals. And the thing is, we have a big brain, right? We have a prefrontal cortex. So we can right. do things uh, to extremes for the good and for the bad, much more so than other animals can. I mean, and that's not really anything so, mystical so, or surprising. But your entire premise, you know, your entire argument rests and, you know, depends on the fact that, oh, we want, um, this is part of our nature, that we want flourishing and other people to be happy. But mm -hmm. now you're saying, well, no, we actually very, we could be very mean to each other. We could be very. Yeah, but I'm not calling that moral. We're talking about what's moral. Yeah, but what... but but again, the whole point of what's moral, like if you if you, I mean, the whole argument from you on why this is good, why it's bad, relies on the fact that we want other people. We we have sympathy for each other, right? right. And we want to see other people happy and not in, uh, not see other people to experience misery. But then if it relies on all of that, and then we actually look at the humans and we see that actually they're pretty, they're dicks to each other, um, then doesn't that make the whole thing fall apart? No. Why? No, because, okay, so look at civilization, right? You know how intricate civilization is and how... How many good acts and how many people doing their their part have to have to work in, in concert for civilization to work? If humans were rabid animals that just wanted to go around killing and raping each other all the time, mm. then how could it function, right? You know what I mean? I mean, I know the news. You know, is if it bleeds, it leads, and we like to, you know, look at how things fall apart, and, and it's much easier and more spectacular when things fall apart. But look at all of the, I mean, all the cooperation that goes on you know, within one town, city, country, you know, and look how much progress has been made. I mean, and, and people can see the benefits of cooperation. Those instincts are there and, and they, they're, they're not going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, when people are destructive, they destroy things. And what do they accomplish? Nothing. They tear things down. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't make that point. Just civilization itself. And, and obviously we, there's been very bad things about civilization. I mean, uh, when we lived in a state of nature, we had constant, you know, violence and we were in chaos. There were no rights. Um, and the first, um, you know, civilizations brought new kinds of violence, but that's been steadily improved through history, through experience, through learning from history, through applying reason. So, right. So is this something you cover in your book? Which part? The, this, this, this whole I oh, mean, yeah. the, the, okay, can you, yeah, I ask you uh, what you cover in your book uh, and the morality chapter. You, I, mm -hmm. I don't think I got a, a specific oh, answer. Yeah. Can, can you mention so, that? So, pretty much everything I've been saying. Yeah. A lot of, I've been using a lot of what's in my book, yeah. Um, and, and again, I, I cite this uh, statistic about different countries and states in the U.S., um, right. all of that. And I also list several celebrities, and not just celebrities, like scientists and uh, uh, iconic figures who are non-believers that a lot of people don't even know about. Um, just to make the point, you know, the ridiculous assertion that, you know, atheists or non-believers can't be moral or fulfilled, which is absurd. Right. Um, and again, you can point out all those countries um, universally, pretty much uh, across the world, the worst places are the most religious and uh, you know, well, well, what most... about China right now? Um, and I don't know too much about China lately. Um, I mean, they put one thousand Muslims in. Uh, camp. Yeah, they got a lot of Big Brother stuff going on with their surveillance and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and they're very well, anti-religious. Sure China. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So. Yeah. But I mean, by, by and large, like Japan, for example, is right beside it. 
Right. And it's extremely secular. Yeah, but so. it's interesting because um, China is the religious people's favorite example of an athe- of a anti-religious or atheist country, and Scandinavian countries are atheist favorite examples of uh, non-religious countries. Right. So. Yeah, but yeah, there are exceptions, but the universal rule stands. And that is that the worst countries are the most religious, um, and they have the most problems, which is strange, right? Because if there's any God, you know, listening to prayers, you'd think he would answer the prayers where there, there are most there are the most prayers emanating from a certain place. But of course, that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, but so. the, standard, the standard answer uh, to that is that that's uh, God's, you know, that's just religious people, not God's religion. You know, people, uh, people say, well, of course people are going to abuse God. Um, the Bible, or Muslims will say, of course people are going to abuse the Quran. That doesn't mean the, Cor- is, the Quran is wrong, or that doesn't mean the Bible is wrong. That just people are just taking advantage of God's words and twisting it in their own corrupt ways to take advantage of it. That's how they, they will respond to that. And they should read their own holy books. You know? <laughs> huh. There's instructions in there, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, so my, my answer to that whole feeling thing is that you know, when, when people say, oh, I have feelings, I, I felt Jesus in my heart, therefore he's real. Right. Um, and w- the thing is that we're not denying the existence of the feeling, right? Right. We're, we're denying yeah. the existence of, of God or the Jesus uh, that this person believes in. But we're not saying that the feeling is not real. Right. Right. So the feeling that some, if somebody says, "Oh, I have love for Jesus," I feel him in my heart. We we would say like, "Well, probably the feeling is real," right? right. So, um, so similarly, if you want to compare that to what we're saying, when we say, uh, because when we say we f- we feel sympathy for our fellow human beings, mm-hmm. well, in a similar way, what we're saying is that feeling is real, right? Right. Um. And in a similar way, when we say, well, God is made up, I think we acknowledge that, yeah, the feeling is real, and the moral code that we come up with, we, I don't think, and let me know what you think, I don't have a problem admitting that that's made up. We made those our, codes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The feeling ethics, is, yeah. Our ethics and rules and laws are made up, but they're, based, up. On, they're based on universal objective facts about our nature and what best works. Right, but they're just saying made up is not a negative thing. There are many no. things that are made up. Some well, of them did are. God, did God make up His rules? I mean, I guess He did. I yeah, mean... yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, if if it, you're right, because if if their rules comes from God, well, their God had to make it up, right? And it, and if they're good rules, right? This this goes back to the uh, Euthyphro dilemma of, of Socrates via yeah. Plato, right? So if God has good rules. Um, and he's commanding things for the reason that they're good. Can we just uh, skip the middleman and go right to the good reasons and have actual reasons to support them and not just blind authority? Because blind authority is very, you know, shaky and untrustworthy. I mean, blind authority can get you anywhere to many contradictory places. But if you have if you have evidence and reason that you're basing it on, that's much more reliable and, and, and liable to succeed, right? Well, so, the, the the understanding is that the the best person that would know what's the how to operate a machine is the is the person that made the machine. Well, apparently he doesn't because I mean, look at the world. I mean, look at all the different religions. Look at you know well, the history of the religions. I mean, people say that you know uh, the God is guiding history, but look at the history of like just Christianity. I mean, it's it's horrendous and comical even. Well, that's I mean, it's they entirely would say that, man-made. Well, they would say that's because of Christians, not because of Christianity. Yeah, but they say God is guiding it, right? And God well, has made no, this perfect they, book that's there. Yeah, know. but they, they have. They will say they they are not following it correctly. They that's what they will say. Okay, they say but nobody like, can agree on what's correct. So doesn't a wise man speak clearly? Doesn't a benevolent and God, a benevolent and wise God, speak clearly? Wouldn't they? If they had an important message to send to you, right? But well, he he it doesn't. Right? No, they say the message was clear, but these people's hearts were corrupt, and they have different. <laughs> that's just BS. That I mean, that is that is absurd. I mean, that's just completely absurd. I'm just trying. I mean, who, who's, whose heart is not corrupt? Then all right, what but this sect is not corrupt. Okay, so I'm gonna just make up an example as a Christian. You could borrow this, by the way. It's okay. like you have you have you have a 
uh, pure water coming in, but you have a filter that makes everything dirty. I've, when you put like water through that, of course, everything that you get from uh, the other side is going to be like, um, you know, disease-ridden water. But it's the water from like they're saying like these are our own minds and hearts are corrupted, and the God's word is pure. But then we corrupt, we we use it for our own corrupt intentions, um, even though the word like if we wanted to, if we were clear, if we were pure. If we read it by the pure heart, it would have been very clear to us what, what the intentions is. And, and so they say, well, it's a man. Why can we not determine pure. whose heart is pure? Or what what water is pure? Right. I but mean, they, then they say like we could judge them by the fruits of their labor. If the results are good, then you know that they're. Then how do you know what's good? How do you know whether whose results are good? It's in the Bible. What's well, the standard? But the Bible's full of contradictions. Well, okay, that opens a different discussion. It is, but I mean, it's still re relevant to what their argument, right? right? Well, yeah, well, they say it's not contradictory, but then we'll get... Demonstrably, but, 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 it is. I know, but, I know, but that's what they would say. It is, but the, but my point was trying to... What a, what a point I was trying to make is, like, we acknowledge that the moral codes are made up, just like God is made up, but right. some made up things are good, and some made up things are bad, right? Sure. If I... If I, if me and you go out and you uh, we're buying pizza, for example, and I realize that I don't have my wallet with me, and we come up with an agreement that you pay for me this time and I'll cover you next time, that agreement was made up, right? Yeah. We just made it up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it's it's working out for us. It's yeah. just, it's just because I, it's I don't think morality up. is sitting in the yeah. air somewhere to be right. like this magical thing. I mean, Every we're contract, all primates and we have to live together and we. Right. Do we implement the things we the best we can? You know, our tools the best tools that we have to get to get there to get to the best agreement, as you refer to. So I mean, the there's objective things, some information. Some of the best things in the world are made up, right? Yeah. Our all our whole economy is running based on made up agreements. Money yeah. is made up. The fact that money has like this piece of paper has certain value. This is just made up, but it's working out. Everything, all of this is. Based on made up rules and standards, they're all made up, but just made up doesn't mean bad, right? So we come right. up we come up with some things and we agree on it and it ends up working, right? Have you have you heard of uh Yuval Noah Harari? Yeah. Yeah, he has a couple of books called uh, uh Sapiens and uh Homo Deus. Yeah, um yeah. that are really good to talk about how, you know, we have a lot of things that are made up, but they're like kind of real like money, gods, religion and, and they still have an effect and they still have good benefits even though they're made up. But just a good uh, reference there. For. Right. Another thing is that a lot of people might tell us that, um, you know, okay, so what, like, this, the, the discussion that we were having about psychopaths and stuff, right? The, right? the thing is that I agree that there is no right answer. There is no right answer to say why people should care. Mm -hmm. There is no right answer. But the thing is that most of us do. Yeah. Okay, most of us do. Yeah. Why should people care? I, they, I mean, if you don't, then you don't. But, because if you don't, again, if you don't care, what are you going to do? I mean, no, but you, you still don't care about psychopaths or just don't care about anything? What, what are you referring no, to? I'm just saying if you're one of the, those minority people that doesn't feel sympathy for their fellow human beings, you're. I'm sorry for you, but you're outnumbered. I'm actually, uh, the thing is that yeah. I'm not... I'm yeah. not sorry for you because you're actually benefiting for the, from the fact of being outnumbered. Like psychopaths would would not want to live in a world where everybody was psychopath was a psychopath, yeah. right? right? So I don't even feel sorry for psychopaths. I mean, I do feel sorry for them if they're harm, but I don't feel sorry for them for the fact that they're minority because they're actually benefiting from being the minority. Because the rest of us that do care for each other have come up with rules and standards that they are taking advantage of. Right, so it's right. even it's even in the best interest of the psychopath that they're the minority. So right. yeah, I so my answer. Let me know what you think about this. My answer is like, hey, how could you convince a psychopath that they should care? My answer is like, I don't, I can't. But tough luck, they're a minority, and we rule over them. Well, <laughs> like, you we could you them. could speak to them about the benefits of caring. No, but right? but no, no, you can't because even if you, the you logical can't. benefits, not not necessarily the emotional benefits. Yeah, but. But or, the, or the material benefits, possibly. The, the but might. even if you can't, okay, even if you can't convince them, the fact is that it's a situation of majority rules, I think. I think we get to 
we get to force, like, we come up with rules that we put on society because we want societies to flourish, and they don't get a say. Right. Right? I mean, like, what's wrong with that? I mean, (laughs) nothing. I I don't think anything's wrong with that. Right. Um, Have you heard of um, uh, Dostoevsky? Yeah. Uh, You know how he said, um, he famously observed, if God does not exist and everything is permitted. Right? You've heard that saying? Yeah. So I mean, I think that um, I think that's backwards, right? Because if if yeah. um, you think God, if you think God is on your side, then everything is permitted, right? You don't right. have to think. That's a great way to to ignore your fellow human beings that are right there, you know, and appealing to an invisible authority, right? They can't be justified to non-adherence, right? So um, you know, well, I no, mean, well, okay, so and I if actually... God on, is on your side, then everything is permitted, right? Pretty much, um... if you think God demands it. Right. So, but not. But but the thing is, then the Christian or the Muslim will say, actually, well, then God doesn't command it because I'm limited by what's allowed in this book and what you yeah, know. Yeah, but he he commands all kinds of heinous things in the book, though. I mean, even if they want to make the that's, excuse, oh, it was say, this time and whatever. But you know, it, he still commanded it, right? Yeah, but they say that no, that's just because you don't understand it. I'm I, that's that's too much too long of a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to be. Fi- I'm just trying to. I know what the standard responses are, right? So I'm just trying right. to make sure that I bring the, um, bring them up if the, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I know we're not going to get into like a Bible study right now, but that would be the standard response. Like, oh, you just don't get it. You just biased. You're just. You have so much hate for Christianity in your a heart. A lot of their fellow Christians don't get it either. Again, because how many sects of Christianity are there? Right. Like, why? They have the word of God before them. Why is there so much confusion? Right. Right. So, well, I know the answer to that question because it's what? not made by God. It's <laughs> man made. Man edited, edited by men, created by men, preserved by men, altered by men, all that, you know. So, so. here's here's the thing. Um I know we're gonna we could like quote Pinker and all that that but but what um the, is is our societies actually getting better? Because they say, like David was was saying, like actually, look, they're not the worst. The worst ones happened recently, right? Like they say, if you look at history, if you look at Stalin and Mao and the Holocaust and all of that, these were recent. Uh, these were all recent. So, yeah. um, it's it must well, be. Pinker says. He he phrases it that they are um, they were anomalies basically, right? More or less. Um, but you know, for hundreds of years, the trend has been exponentially greater rights, equality, freedom, right. um, flourishing, uh, every positive thing that you know most people would consent that that's, that's positive has been exponentially rising in unprecedented ways. Yeah. Um, and if but you go back and read all of history before that, mm-hmm. life was comparatively speaking hell. There were no rights. Slavery was ubiquitous. Um, you know, women had no rights for all of history. And most people died like, you know, like most of their kids died about five years old and women died in childbirth. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things we could just all over the place we could go into, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you if their data is very clear that the standard of living has improved, right? A lot. Like you have to really zoom in on like. A, and you you notice a big key um for a lot uh, just across the board is um when you have a higher standard of living and your basic essentials are taken care of, you have much less need for religion. So you know a lot of the time, and you have less reason to be desperate and to you know go out and and slaughter people and, and be convinced by dogmatic nonsense that you should slaughter people. Things like that. So that that so, kind of contributes there. They're tied up. Yeah. So if this is what I said, I said like if you zoom out, we will get the picture that you just explained, right? That things are getting better. You have to. Really well, the way zoom- I put it in my book is we've gone from cave dwellers to space explorers, and that is freaking awesome, and it's undeniable. And we did that. So right. So what? I, what, what yeah. So if you, for you to be able to show like that the world is getting worse, you have to really zoom in on examples like Stalin, Hitler, and Mao, right? But if you actually zoom out and look at it, you can see that things are actually getting a lot better. Because but it's then, not a magical process, you know. It's not. There's not a a magical arc bending towards justice, but through experience, through learning from history, through uh, uh, the application of reason, you know, in institutions like democracy and things of that nature, um, we've gone that direction. 
for the most part overall. Yeah, and again, it's I'm going to have to plug terrible. this book, Steven Pinker's book. Read this one, Enlightenment Now. You can see, wait, is it showing a mirror image? Yeah, it's showing uh, a mirror. I, I've, I've got the book right up here, right behind yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a really good book, um, but um, but then but then somebody like David would say, "Well, yeah, standard of living is getting better, but that doesn't mean people are happier." Yeah, I've heard that argument. Um, actually, Pinker says that uh, the studies show that they are happier. People are how, happier. How how can you show? There's that? a study like um, uh, Adrian White of uh, Leicester University and uh, Britain did a happiness study. I think it was a meta study based on a lot of uh, studies, and it showed that people are happier. Uh, Right. On, on average, I mean, and, and I would think they should be right if you don't have yeah. to worry about you know, all these you yeah. know diseases and some well, every people, day somebody might come over the hill and wipe out your town and rape your wife and steal your little daughter or something, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? this is so. that's what I. Uh, that's people think like oh, like people are stressed, people have bills to pay, people have um, they have no purpose, people don't know what they're living for, and this is what I told David. This is like, listen, I have a lot of stress dealing with all of this as well, but yeah. I'll take all of the stress of the modern life, or like I'll I'll gladly take over that. Um, given that I know that my wife is probably not going to die in childbirth, right? right. Yeah, like absolutely. if that's the cost of me knowing that I get to be with her till you know until old age, uh, right. if that's the cost of me having to worry about bills and stuff like that, I gladly pay that cost, right? Like I, I, I think a lot of the people uh, in you know that talk about the you know sadness and you know stress. They they don't know the stress of holding your fifth dead child in your arm, right. you know. You know they don't they know. Granted, yeah. They they don't know how much how much the the pain of a lot of the diseases that people had to lose it. You know, having to cut your arm without any anesthetics. They don't know. They you know going into going for you know leaving your family to go on on a trade mission and coming back in five years. People are like oh we're so disconnected. Do you know how many people had to not see their family for years and years just because of the job they had and they couldn't even have a Skype call to just see you know talk right. to them? like I don't I don't I think the times before, past people never left. They like their village and they never saw their grandkids or right. the kids if they moved away right so i mean yeah, we're you... more connected people people bitch a lot about about um you know social media <laughs> rightly so right. but man it's amazing right yeah. i yeah. mean it connects people in a positive way i mean it's it's really pretty awesome yeah, you know it, it has drawbacks but every every technology does so yeah no we're more connected we're happier yeah. And we're ungrateful. <laughs> we're kind of, yeah. we're we're extremely ungrateful. Yeah. Uh, what, so this is what what's the main the entire so this is just one chapter in your book. But what's the main point of the your book? Like the all of it together. Yeah. So um, the justified faith is humanity. Humanity is um what you should believe in and have faith in because again the overall arc is going from cave dwellers to space explorers, right? Hmm. Um, and it's not thanks to Christianity or religion. That faith is not justified for so many reasons. And, and I, you know, morality, theistic morality is one, one chapter. Uh, uh, the Christian history is a chapter. Um, ideas like hell are a chapter. Uh, the problem of other religions, that's a chapter. Uh, sexism, problems with scripture, uh, theocracy, the problem uh, with science in regards to it. Uh, but nature what? of the indifferent universe we live in hmm. so and and I, I make the argument that it's not again not because of religion that we've got that progress you know it's it's much like pinker says it's a, right. a reason and science and um so it's a good know, education uh so so it's a, it's a it would be a good book that touches a little bit on all of this like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, if you want to basically get a little bit of a taste of every single you know not just like not just uh, like a Stephen Pinker book that focuses on the progress no you, a little right. bit of that a little bit of morality a little bit of why we have a problem with religion just a, just an overall review of all of this that would be a good book um, what, but why? Why did you call it justified faith? A lot of atheists don't like the word faith. Like, yeah, uh, I'm. I was. I was. Um, I had a lot of trepidation about using that word mm. because of that that reason. <laughs> but I just think it. Um, I think it sounds good, and 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 I'm using it uh, juxtaposed against religious faith. So mm. I think if you use faith in a certain way, there's a lot of definitions. Then then it's 
it it works. So mm. it serves its purpose. Um, so the book is uh, I wanted to write a book um, detailing Christianity, why Christianity is bad and wrong and illogical. But I I, um, I didn't want to write a book just about that because I've seen that so many times. You know, mm. there's a lot of books that do that. So I wanted to have a positive message and an alternative um, kind of you know thing to present worldview to present mm. which is basically secular humanism and um how that is justified and, and why religion is not so the first chapter of my book is just a short you know thing about my story personally the last chapter is uh talks about the worldview and lays it out in detail secular humanism um and why you know like secular humanism has brought us to progress basically and in between uh it just goes over um you know, it's the negative part of the book that goes over all the problems of religion and why um, it's not justified and, 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 you know, all its issues. So, uh, mm-hmm. and I was actually inspired to write the book. I had I'd been thinking about writing a book for a while and my sister, who's very religious, uh, she wrote a book and published it. A very Christian book. I think it's called uh, The Price of Birth. I think it's on Amazon, too. And so when I saw that, I was like, I'm going to write this freaking book. I'm finally going to do this. I mean, if she can write that book, I'm going to write, I'm going to write my book, you know. <laughs> Um, Did she read your book? Be, I don't think so. I think I gave her a copy, but I don't know if she read it. So, Did you read her book? I skimmed it. <laughs> it's basically yeah, the same. You, you know, are you guys on good terms? Mm, not great terms, honestly. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. See, you should have let, I don't know. It's so sad. Religion divides people like that. If if we give, yeah. is it, it does yeah. do you think it's because of religion that you are not close? Yeah, I think yeah. so. So sad. Yeah, she, she's really religious, so yeah. Mm. Uh, Did he try to convert you? No, no, she no. didn't. Oh, mm. Yeah, she unfriended me on Facebook. Uh, basically, uh-huh. uh, she didn't want to see my posts and stuff, you know. But I'm still friends with my mom, who's religious, right? Right. And she, she knows you can just not follow somebody's posts, but I don't know. <laughs> Are you gonna try to fix? You know, maybe, maybe eventually. Maybe, maybe eventually. Yeah. 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 So. Maybe we could write a book about how to keep a family together. Even, you know, that would be interesting. Yeah, maybe. Even um, if you disagree. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, all right. So, go ahead. Yeah, go on. No, you go ahead. Yeah. Um. Are we going to get into cosmology at all and just uh, kind of? No. Well, let's do that one more uh, at another time. You have a chapter on cosmology in your book. Well, I have a chapter on science, okay. and it goes into everything you know about the universe, and you know all the arguments like uh if something needs oh. a creator, you know, does God need a creator? And uh, if God existed forever, why can't the universe exist forever, be the thing that existed forever? Because right. it's simpler than God, and we know it exists. Um, and how everything we see seems to be, uh, it's bottom up, right? And not top right. down. So right. evolutionary, right? Um, so things like that. And I make I make the, the observation, like, you know, I haven't heard very much, like, what, what universe does God exist in, right? Because he ex- occupies some space, it's, you know, is he like there by himself, bored forever, you know, just and then one day he creates the universe. I mean, what it just kind of makes no sense. Um, right. I touch so, on many things like that. So, so, so we um, actually can. Can you can you do me a favor? Sure. This is something that I'm trying to actually encourage more people to do uh, on those topics. Can you uh, we, I don't know if you know this. We have a new group called Atheist Republic Video Reports. Have you heard of that? I don't think so. OK, so it's a Facebook group. And you basically go there and you record a video uh, yeah. and you just post it in that group and it will yeah. just take the videos from that group and we'll post it on our YouTube channel. Right. Okay. So yeah. um, and you, you could like link you could, you know, mention your book or ask for the link to be in the description or anything like that. But you could basically anytime you want, you could just go in that group and just and I want more people. Basically, what I'm trying to do is to get more people from all across the world to bring in reports like people from India talking about atheism in India or, <laughs> or you know, Hinduism in India or somebody from Malaysia. Or I, By the way, if you're listening to this and if you're in a country where it's not safe, maybe don't point the camera at your face. Uh, if you if you post a video there or like wear a mask or something, I don't know, but but just post it over there and we basically because we want to the whole point of Atheist Republic is to like give a voice to atheists worldwide, right? So we're just trying to remove the barriers for people to give people our audience on on YouTube, right? So people don't even if you don't have a big YouTube channel or anything or or a podcast or anything, all you have to do is just post it there. 
and we'll just make it both on both our Facebook page and our on our YouTube channel. So we made the process a lot easier, right? And we're allowing people to uh, to plug anything they want, like their podcast, their book, their YouTube channel, their Twitter account. So, and if you, if more people start doing it, then it will encourage other people to keep doing that as well. Do you think right. that's a good idea? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah? definitely. I, I, yeah, yeah. All right. And it's sad uh, the, the, those countries, the conditions people live in. Um, yeah, it's, it's getting it's, worse. It's, yeah, it's disgusting, really. That's yeah. uh, and, and it's really getting cool. yeah. I mean, sec- secularism is under attack in H- India. Well, it's and, under attack in this country too, by the way. Yeah, in in the United <laughs> States, in Israel, uh, in Malaysia, getting worse. In Indonesia, is getting worse. In Egypt, yeah. is getting worse. In Turkey, is getting worse. In Poland, is getting worse. Like we are really losing this fight. And so I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say that. We are. Losing. The, I mean. Because you can look at America and the nuns are the fastest growing, you know. Yeah, group. but they're the least and active. And even in Europe, Europe's like left religion and like behind, right? But they so, are the least active. And in Asia but, and parts. Oh. What? Parts oh, I, of Asia I, also. Okay, like no, and, but recent trends is not looking good, okay? Europe, so? yeah, Europe, Christianity is dying in, in Western Europe. Islam is making, right. like, they, the, the thing is that these people are very, very active, very clever. Like, for example, in Israel, right? Most people are secular in Israel. Yep. But the religious people are extremely clever. Like they are, they know how to play politics. They just know how to play politics. And the government is getting less secular, even though people are getting more secular. The government is getting less secular. So I just think as atheists, we don't really play. You know, we don't get to get. You know, people. A lot of atheists are allergic of, of of getting together because they think it looks too much like a religion, and that's why they keep losing all these battles because they yeah. think like as soon as we get together and try to do something, like oh, now it's looking like a religion. I'm like, well, yeah, I great. agree with you big time on that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have to. We have to have a movement. We have power in numbers. That's what religious people do, right? I mean, right. you see Jews and Catholics get together and and they'll you know to to a common end uh, politically to pass some legislation or whatever. Right. Um, and there's so many secular people. I mean, you ha- more and more, and we have to do that. Uh, yeah, and I mean, the necessity. problem is when they say, like, as soon as we get together and try to get something done, and they say, like, oh, now you look like a religion, they're like, oh, great job. Now you give monopoly to religious people over community. Like, you get, get you yeah. basically, it's telling them that they have ownership over community. Like, uh, yeah. They hijack community and morality and yeah, and they, and our atheists on our side are giving are giving it to them because those are human qualities. Yeah, you know, human <laughs> endeavors, human activities. So, I mean, if 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 get if getting organized and trying to get stuff done is makes you religion, my my study group in in, in that's religious, right? That was also a religion then. That's <laughs> yes, religious. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> anyways, anyways, what's um um? Can you mention show your book one more time? Yeah. Yeah, I'll link to it in uh, the description. Lord, yeah, a justified faith. Justified faith. By yeah, Landon Hayes. Yeah. It's on Amazon. It's on. It's, it's on Amazon. Yeah. Print and it's all, Kindle. Print and, and uh, Kindle. Yeah, yeah. Cool. and it's on the um the Atheist Republic uh, website also, where awesome. you can also find some blogs that I've done. Um, one is called uh, Atheist Before Darwin. Um, and it goes through some Enlightenment names, uh, like the Hobach and Diderot and uh, some others. Um, and explores um, how people had theories of evolution before mm-hmm. Darwin. I think going back to Greece, like Anim- Anix, what's his name? Anaraxa, I can't remember his name, but you know, going back. And because uh, Darwin, I mean, uh, Dawkins said in one of his books that um, I couldn't imagine being an atheist before Darwin. And that kind of always, it's like, is it a, regardless of whether or not evolution no. is true, I yeah. mean, is it a bad theory, God or not? So yeah. I met, I met uh, Dawkins recently at a, an event. Uh, in Nashville, near where I live, um, and I, I actually posed that question to him. But uh, what did he say? He really didn't say anything. Uh, um, he just kind of said, uh, "I'll think about that" or something. I don't, I don't remember. Right. It's been a while. <laughs> it's pretty I, um, tough, but... Okay, but here's, I have a, I have an idea. We should um, go through the Enlightenment thinkers and make maybe make like one episode about each one of them separately. That would be what cool. You, you mean like a kind of a this this type of format? Yeah, like just do one okay. on Voltaire, yeah. one yeah, on yeah. Rousseau, one on. You I think know, the big names there you might want to keep in mind is um, the Holbach and uh, Diderot, D I D E R O T. I just read a great book about him. It was awesome. 
Let's he had all, theories of evolution in there. It was pretty cool. Let's yeah. do all of the main Enlightenment thinkers, both both European and North American. Oh, yeah. I'm a big Thomas Jefferson. Uh, I wouldn't say fan. He has some issues, but in, in some ways, I'm a big fan of, of his. Uh, Carl Sagan was a big fan of Jefferson, so I'll right. say I'm a big fan of Jefferson. <laughs> um, yeah, but definitely, uh, yeah, Jefferson and, and uh, uh, Franklin and, and Voltaire and David Hume and um, those people. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And many names that people don't know about. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah. let's do that because I think people need to be saying, need to know why, like, they're, where did where did the superior enlightenment values where did it came from? Because it did yeah. not come out of the Bible. So I think you we check need out to... Jonathan. Jonathan Israel is a big enlightenment scholar, and he oh. kind of actually narrows down the source of our modern yeah. values is the most most atheistic and radical enlightenment names like the Holbach. He's got a book called A Revolution of the Mind. Right, uh, and that's that really lays that out. That it's actually the most radical part of the Enlightenment, because people like Voltaire kind of play the they play both sides. Like they they appeal to royalty and they like kind of sucked up to royalty and they kind of like acted like they cared about the common people. So, um, yeah, it's. Uh we you know it's interesting because every time I attack Christianity, a lot of Christians on the, on our come to our channel and they say that I'm being ungrateful because I'm an ex-Muslim and back right. where I come from they will they will they will kill me and it's only because I'm living in a Judeo Christian country that I get to attack Christianity and where it's free in a Judeo Christian country. So I so I had two a, podcasts about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. I have another, I have another yeah. recent blog also um, yeah. called uh, Hardship and Atheism. Hard I think it's on the main page, yeah. Okay, and it's okay. just about, like, you know, atheist non-believers will hear, you know, if they have hard times, you know, see, stop being an atheist. And, like, you kind of you have to point out, like, prisons are full of the religious people, right? right. And there's so many successful non-believers, and this stuff doesn't make sense. And I point out the problems with prayer, like, you know, like, why are you letting a, an all-knowing God know something? And why are you asking him to alter his perfect plan? And, right. um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, that's on there I, also. Okay, okay. Can you, um, I'll send, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I'll, I'll send you the link uh, after we get done. Okay, it. sweet. And and anything else as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, but I look forward to your short videos in the Atheist Republic report group because on any like th th topic. Anytime you uh, want to rant, is a really good place to just dump it in there, and then eventually right. we'll make it on our YouTube channel, right? Yeah, and keep keep me apprised about the. Uh, you know, if you're serious about getting on like a regular like enlightenment name per video, like yeah, um, podcast, um, yeah, I, I think, think the whole be. block would be the or did a row would be the best. Place right. To start. You yeah. let us know in the, the in the comment section if you think that's a good idea. But I think that's a good idea. That's pretty I, cool I, to me. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. a good way to educate people that don't know about it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Cool. Say so. All right, I'm gonna stop recording. But anyways, thank you so much. Um, I think we went on one hour, but uh, again, check out his book, uh, A Justified Faith by Landon Haynes. Uh, it's a very good overview of, like, if you're, a, especially if you're not an atheist and you want to be like, what these atheist people are on, like, on, on about, but if you want to just get an overview of all the different discussions that we have, um, it's a very good, you know, summary of all of it. So, A Justified Faith. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي podcast باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.